Hello there, my name is John and in this video I'd like to introduce you to SV Bonnet's high performance digital planetary camera, the SV505C. First of all, we'll take a look at what's inside the box. Then I'll show you how to put it all together. Then we'll take a look at how to connect it to our telescope and notebook computer. We will then need to register our device in SharpCap. I'll then show you how to collect your first planetary image. And finally, at the end of this video, I'll show you some sample processed images I previously collected of Jupiter and Saturn. As you can see, it's packed extremely well and in a nice, solid and secure box. And if we open the box, here is the camera itself, the SV505C Digital Planetary Camera. On the top, we have the socket for the ST4 guide cable. And below that is the USB 3 socket, which you will use to connect to your notebook computer. The unit also comes fitted with a dust cover protect a very sensitive CMOS sensor, which you can see there. And the unit comes with a very sensitive Sony IMX464 CMOS color sensor, which supports resolutions of 4.2 megapixels. The pixel size you get is around 2.9 microns, with a frame rate of up to 93 frames per second. Also in the box is a T2 adapter together with a 1.25 inch barrel T adapter. Underneath these components we have some cables and accessories. Here is the ST4 guide cable. Here is the USB 3 cable. This is an M42CS adapter tube. We have some lens cleaning cloth. And finally, we have the SV505C user manual. So to summarize, here's a list of all of the items that are included in the package. First, we remove the T2 adapter from the 1.25 inch barrel T adapter. Then we take our camera and we remove the protective dust cover. And we attach the barrel T adapter to our camera. Now, in this demonstration, I'm planning to use a Celestron 2X Barlow lens, so let's attach this to our camera. And tighten the screw. And we're now ready to attach our camera to our telescope. Now we're going to connect our SV Bonnie 505C planetary camera to our telescope. In this video, I'm using a Celestron Nexstar 8SE telescope. This is fitted with a Celestron focusing motor and also an SV Bonnie 208 finder scope. So, the first thing that we're going to do is to remove the eyepiece from our telescope and we're going to replace it with the SV Bonnie 505C camera. You notice the green and white dots which I use to align the telescope with the camera. This greatly assists me when I'm navigating to planetary objects using SharpCap. The next thing we're going to do is to connect our SV 
USB Bonnie camera to our USB cable and we connect the other end to our notebook computer. You'll notice that I use white dots on my notebook and USB which greatly assist me in performing these cable connections operations when it's dark. So, the final connection configuration looks like this. Before you can register your device in SharkCap, you should first go to the SV Bonnie website and download the latest driver. Simply go to the support page, select software and driver. If your notebook operating system is Windows, select it and under SV Bonnie cameras, click download. Once your software is downloaded, install it into your notebook computer and then start SharpCap. So, once you have successfully updated the drivers in your notebook computer, start SharpCap, then go to the cameras menu and select SV Bonnie SV505C and after a few seconds the camera will load into SharpCap. Okay, we now have an SV505C image of Jupiter displayed on our screen in SharpCap. I like to start by using the largest capture area possible to simplify object identification and then to progressively reduce the capture area to the level where I want to collect my image. I'm using a color space of RAW16 and an output format of SER and also I've clicked on the auto white balance adjust button to correct the image color profile. Now, if I maximize the exposure and gain settings, you'll be able to see Jupiter's moons, uh, Io, Ganymede, and Europa. I like to use these moons to fine tune the focus of my telescope before imaging the planet itself. So, let's reset the exposure and gain settings to their previous values. Okay. Now, I'll drop the capture area settings and then reposition the planet into the center of my field of view. So let's drop it down to 1280 by 1024 and then recenter. We'll drop it down again to 1024 by 768. And then 800 by 600. And then finally to 640 by 480, which is the resolution I normally use when I'm collecting my planetary images. Then launch the shark cap histogram to assist in making sure that the exposure and gain are indeed set correctly and to avoid any overexposure. Remember to check the logarithmic tick box for logarithmic mode. Then I proceed to collect my image of Jupiter. Go to quick capture. I'm selecting 120 seconds. After downloading my image, I then use Auto Stack Art and Registax to process the image. And towards the end of this presentation, I've got two images of Jupiter and Saturn that I've previously collected.